Good evening. The Indian Space Research Organization today successfully launched its GSLVF-12 rocket. This is India's larger rocket, which is crucial for future space missions. The GSLV, which had a recent failure, carried the NVS-01 satellite on board, the first of a new generation of communication satellites, which is meant for a new constellation of Indian communication satellites. These will be an Indian alternative, among other things, to global positioning systems or GPS and will enable users to get their precise location, which is crucial for multiple applications ranging from map services, regional navigation to positioning data for missiles. Now, ISRO has several missions planned this year, including tests ahead of the Gaganyaan human space mission and the launch of Chandrayaan-3, which aims to place a lander on the surface of the moon. So what we're going to be doing in the next little while, I'll be joined uh, by uh, my former colleague, uh, Pallav Bagla, who's back with us, to um, discuss a little bit about both the GSLV and uh, the satellite on board, what it all means. But before I come to Pallav, let's listen in to what the ISRO chairperson had to say. Congratulations for the excellent GSLV after NVS-01 mission outcome. I'm very happy to announce the NVS-01 navigation satellite for the Navi constellation has been placed in the precise orbit by GSLV F-12 vehicle. Congratulations to the entire team, ISRO, for making this mission happen. As all of you are aware, this mission uh, of GSLV F-12 is after the debacle that we had in F-10 mission where the, there was an issue in the cryogenic stage. The cryogenic engine ignition could not be accomplished. And I'm very happy that the corrections, the modifications in the cryogenic stage that we have done in this stage, as well as the lessons that we learned out of it to make our cryogenic stage more reliable, has really paid benefits. All right, so Pala, first question, in simple terms, what does this satellite do? Oh, this is a very fine satellite, which will give India navigation signals, and which I sometimes call the Desi GPS. Uh, India needed a global positioning system, and India launched its first satellite in 2013, had a full constellation. It kind of slowly died off. Now the second generation of the regional navigation system satellites has gone up. It is a very advanced satellite. And more importantly, for the first time, this satellite and its co-brothers and sisters when they go up will give signals which can come straight to our mobile phones. So that is going to be a big jump. Till now, our Navic signals were restricted in a band which was not being received by, directly by the mobile phones. So the first time there is an L1 band which has been incorporated. And largely this is for strategic use. We should be very clear about that. Navic is largely for strategic use for India's armed forces. It gives you a signal accurate signal of less than 20 meters in a 1500 kilometer region around India, which is where we have a ma major threat perception, but it would also have uses in the civilian domain. So let's talk a little bit about the civilian one and then we'll talk about the military one where I've got lots of questions. We use GPS now, for example, I use it on Google Maps all the time. I'm hooked onto Google Maps. Um, one of my favorite apps is Flight Radar 24, which also tracks uh, the movement of aircraft, presumably on GPS, uh, among other, uh, uh, you know, um, um, among other ways. I mean, they, they, they use some of the other sensors which aircraft and uh, which actually have. So, would uh, Navic or this constellation of satellites enable GPS to be replaced with an Indian system? Well, replacement may take time unless the government makes it mandatory for mobile handset manufacturers to incorporate chips which will use Navic as the main constellation, I don't think that will happen. Uh, China certainly did that, and the Chinese navigation system is now tailor-made on their handsets, and it gives them good performance. India's handsets till now are not compatible with the Navic system. In fact, most of our strategic systems are also not compatible, Vishnu. That is a surprise. But in times to come, one should hope 
that the navic signal will become more popular and you never know the current government has a very strong policy towards atmanirbharta and they may just come down one day and say no more gps on your mobile handsets you have to use navic and navic is good mane let's let's be clear navic is good pallav uh, this enables precision guidance for missiles whether it's our ballistic missiles or cruise missiles and the reason this is important is because modern weapon systems use gps targeting um the weapons we use for example during balakot they had different ways of navigation but they were also had gps data which they relied on what india is trying to do is to rely on our own system so that if gps data is switched off for the indian subcontinent for example it won't stop our weapons from targeting what it is that they are targeting right that's why we need the satellite uh one you should know the gps is an american system you have a european a russian and a chinese mostly people know of gps as the american system by american law uh, india cannot use gps in war remember in kargil we could not use gps for targeting uh, uh using gps which is when the whole thought process of having a indian regional navigation system came up which was irnss which subsequently which prime minister modi named as navic nav- navigation through indian constellation and this is very important because this is in your control completely but today's satellite if you see when it was launched the air chief was in the launch control room the army the air force navy all of them were present in the launch control room and this satellite is now going to be owned by them literally they have paid for it it will be owned by them so so there is much more stakeholder in uh, involvement in this second generation of navic and now as soon as we get our chips the stumbling block has been the chips the w- moment we get good chips which are uh, tailor made for navic you would probably see them not just in our strategic systems but also on your handsets the handset chips is what will make a difference uh for use in 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 uh, the smartphones yeah um let's talk about the rocket as well uh it's called what the naughty boy of isro <laughs> but when it works it works brilliantly doesn't it well it remains a naughty boy i it has been called a naughty boy for a reason uh four times earlier it has failed a uh, today's launch was marvelously successful it was a copy book launch it performed absolutely as it was required uh, they made certain changes in the uh, systems of the rocket and the rocket performed brilliantly this is the geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle mark 2 this has an indigenous cryogenic engine made after great perseverance by india uh, took 20 years uh, but this is a rocket which has given indian space research organization a lot of trouble at one point the acronym used for geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle gslv was generally sea loving vehicle oh, now it is no longer that the naughty boy has been tamed and one should see in coming times there would be another launch of a weather satellite and isro thinks that they would be able to launch the big NASA ISRO synthetic aperture radar satellite NISAR using GSLV Mark II uh, though in my personal opinion it's rather risky to put it on a naughty boy one needs a a robust and a good boy like the launch vehicle Mark 3 to launch uh, the NISAR which is the world's most expensive earth imaging satellite ever to be made costing over a billion dollars when is that launch pallav uh, that launch will happen early next year the satellite is being made jointly by nasa and isro a first joint collaboration between the two space powers and it's a it's a, it's an earth imaging satellite which will save lives it's essentially meant for saving lives in disaster situations monitoring the earth crust monitoring glaciers monitoring what is happening in antarctica and arctic so it's a very important launch and uh, 
my own feeling, and, and I'm sure many of the rocket experts are also leaning that it should ideally be launched on launch vehicle Mark III, which is our heaviest uh, rocket, the Bahubali rocket. And that rocket has never failed India. Uh, whereas GSLV Mark II, the naughty boy, has just been tamed. So, so we have a long way to go on this. How many versions of the GSLV do we have? Three versions, right? We have three versions. One was the GSLV Mark I, where the cryogenic engine was the Russian cryogenic stage. Remember the whole controversy around the yeah. cryogenic engine uh, technology transfer, etc. Let's not go there. Then we had the geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle Mark II, where the indigenous cryogenic engine has been used. And we had the geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle Mark III, which has been renamed as launch vehicle Mark III. Uh, and the renaming has happened because the rocket can do many things, not just go to the geosynchronous orbit like the OneWeb launches were low Earth orbits. So the feeling was that it should be renamed as Launch Vehicle Mark III. And it is the same Launch Vehicle Mark III which launched India's Chandrayaan II. And it's the same vehicle which will be used for launching India's Chandrayaan III in the coming weeks. Coming weeks or in the month of June, right? Or uh, so we are almost there now. <laughs> not, not, not June. I'm, I'm hearing it will be sometime in July. Yeah, that's what uh, I. That's what uh, I the final say. dates have still to come out, uh, but the preparation and the, the the both the lander and the uh, the rover are configured onto the satellite. This time there is no orbiter, so it will essentially be something which will carry it to the moon and then there will be a lander and there will be a rover and major changes have happened yep. and one should not see and one should hope that this time Chandrayaan 3 will be a marvelous success yep. because the changes have uh, which sure. have been made are what should what should have been done earlier. All right Pallav great speaking to you and uh, hopefully we'll see you a lot more ahead of uh, all of these crucial launches uh, and of course there will be further tests of uh, the Gaganyaan systems as well before uh, India's first human space flight mission does eventually get underway. We are still some way away from that. For the moment we will take this short break but we we'll leave you with these images. It is always a pleasure to be, to be in studio with you. Remember always we used to call to this you, our Pallav. Jugal Bandi. Absolutely. And the Jugal Bandi is happening again. Absolutely. And uh, you know I mean we we'll leave our viewers uh, as we take a break with this, um, you know, this image of this wonderful rocket. It is so important. The reason Pallav and I get very excited about the Indian space program is because it's Indian. These are designed in India, fabricated in India, um, integrated in India, launched from India, and they work for a very specific requirement. These are not systems or rockets or satellites which we buy off the shelf and then use for our requirements or modify for our requirements, we build these exactly the way we need it. And this is where ISRO is a world beater because it does it at a fraction of the cost of what several other space bars do. That's where we are as far as our space program is concerned, but the future, uh, the sky is, is no limit at all.